This is Chris Garin and welcome to another Brand Origins video. This episode is made possible by Ask Zeus. For $99, they'll give you honest and actionable feedback for your brand. The links are in the description. So this one's gonna be about Big Hit Entertainment. This is the company behind the extremely popular K-pop group, BTS. In October 2020, Big Hit Entertainment went public. And on its first day of trading, share prices doubled, valuing the company at over 8 billion US dollars. And just a heads up, I'm gonna talk less about BTS, K pop, or about their music. My focus here is about the business model of Big Hit Entertainment. Because here I am wondering how sustainable that 8 billion dollar valuation is. Like, is their 8 billion dollar valuation really relying only on the success of this one boy band? I mean, because based on what I know, bands' popularities, they come and go, and a lot of them do last but there's just a lot of uncertainty there. So surely Big Hit must be doing something else, and that's exactly why I made this episode because I discovered that they are indeed working on other revenue streams that are very interesting. Because one of the reasons why Big Hit Entertainment is so successful is because they function as a tech company and not just an entertainment company. What's amazing is that they actually have a team of programmers and have developed in-house these internet platforms and apps that are fueling the growth of BTS as well as their other artists. But then at the same time, these very tools and platforms they've developed, they are slowly being able to stand on their own. So it's things like these that I'll discuss with you in this episode. So in South Korea, there are three big entertainment companies. One is SM Entertainment, which started in 1985. Next is YG Entertainment, who launched in 1986. And then there's JYP Entertainment, launched in 1997. And these three are considered as the big three in South Korea, and they've all been launched a year apart of each other. Now, the man behind Big Hit Entertainment is Bang Si Hyuk. And while he was still in college, he met Park Jin Young. The two of them got along pretty well, and luckily for Bang Si Hyuk, Park Jin Young started a company. And this happens to be one of the big three entertainment companies, JYP Entertainment. Bang Si Hyuk was brought in, and he worked as a composer and producer. He got a lot of experience working there, and he even had a big role in the success of one of the first generation of successful K-pop groups, G.O.D. And so, feeling confident about his abilities, in 2005, Bang si decided to launch his own entertainment company. This is when he launched Big Hit Entertainment. Now, remember that Big Hit seemed like it was late to the party. I mean, it's a full 8 years behind JYP Entertainment. But despite this, Bang si pushed forward. Two years after they launched the company, they had their first group that had big potential. It was a group called 8. You know, some of these K-pop groups have really tricky band names. Like, this 8 group is spelled as the number 8 followed by the word 8. So, and I thought it was pronounced 8-8. Eight, eight. I don't know. Anyway. So, 8 was doing pretty well, but they never quite became the ultra-popular group they were hoping they'd become. And profits-wise, they weren't pulling enough for Big Hit. And not long after, Big Hit found itself on the verge of collapse. I mean, losses were huge, and they needed to find a way to stop the bleeding. Luckily for Big Hit, JYP Entertainment gave it a lifeline. And I'm pretty sure the fact that Bang Si Hyuk and Park Jin Young worked together before, it may have played a role in this. So in 2010, Big Hit and JYP Entertainment agreed to collaborate on a project. There was this group called 2PM and another called 2AM. 2PM was gonna be managed solely by JYP and 2AM was gonna be a collaboration between JYP and Big Hit. Now, this was a huge boost for Big Hit Entertainment because it allowed them to earn enough to keep the company afloat. They had several other projects in mind, they just needed enough money to keep the company running until those projects panned out. It so happens that one of these projects was the development of this new boy band which is no other than BTS. The name of the group is from a Korean expression, Bangtan Son Yeondan, which literally means Bulletproof Boy Scouts. And by Bulletproof, the group is referring to, and I quote, The name signifies the group's desire to block out stereotypes, criticisms, and expectations that aim on adolescents like bullets. So that's why they call themselves Bulletproof. The group would later on explain that the name BTS would stand for Beyond the Scene, which refers to how the group is going beyond the realities they are facing and going forward. 
BTS debuted in 2013, and they kicked it off with a hit song and they were already showing massive potential. But you couldn't really say just yet that they were going to be extremely popular. But in 2015 though, something happened that proved to be pivotal for Big Hit Entertainment. Big Hit issued a bond to Signal Entertainment. It was worth around 6 billion won, or around 4.7 million US dollars. Basically, while this bond wasn't fully paid by Big Hit, it would remain kind of a subsidiary to Signal Entertainment. But why did they do this? Well, since BTS was on the rise and was showing massive potential, they wanted to take full advantage of this opportunity. They didn't want to spare a dime on marketing, partnerships, and they only wanted to choose the best possible way for Big Hit to fuel BTS as it takes off. It was a bit of a gamble because it was as if they were going all in on BTS. Of course, you know what happens. This bet paid off beautifully. And after only a year, they were able to pay back Signal Entertainment and fully settle the bonds, taking back full control of the company. BTS became Big Hit's money printing war machine, and the group's success and popularity was going beyond South Korea. In 2017, BTS achieved a huge milestone when they won the Billboard Music Awards for Top Social Artist. And apparently, Justin Bieber has like a 6-year winning streak since 2011, and BTS broke that streak and are actually currently on a streak of their own since 2017 even till 2020, edging Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, and a bunch of other artists I don't listen to. In 2018, BTS signed with Big Hit for another 7 years. Okay, so now, with this, you kinda start feeling Big Hit Entertainment's heavy reliance on BTS and it kind of feels like they're putting their eggs in one basket. Like, aren't you wondering? Okay, the group's on fire right now, but is that all there is for Big Hit? What happens if they fade away? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Big Hit isn't only an entertainment company. Rather, it's been building itself to become a tech company, specifically an IT-based content company in the entertainment industry. In fact, it's been reported that Big Hit has now started to recruit programmers from big tech companies in Korea such as Naver and Kakao. In 2018, Big Hit created BNX. This whole mentality of Big Hit actually started due to Big Hit's financial constraints. Big Hit knew from the start that it cannot compete with the other big entertainment companies in terms of budget, and what these other companies have been doing was to rely heavily on traditional media platforms such as TV. Big Hit, on the other hand, prioritized social media, but they also felt that social media had its own limitations. So normally, what artists would do is to have their own social media accounts in different social media platforms. So they would have one account on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and that's how they get to connect with their fans. But Big Hit felt that this was too spread out, and it didn't allow them to connect with fans on a more personal level. So what they did was to create their own platforms instead. This one is called Weverse. Weverse is like the only fans of these K-pop groups, because since these guys have amassed massive fan followings, the purpose of the app is to allow these groups to monetize and own their content. Before Weverse, Big Hit as well as its rivals relied on internet forums called fan cafes, and these are forums where these K-pop group superfans would interact. This is also where K-pop groups would give out exclusive content to their own fans, but the forum had one big flaw. The content there was exclusively in Korean. The language barrier, it, it wasn't much of a problem before, but since BTS' success was global, it could no longer ignore the cries of its superfans around the world. When their new K-pop group named Tomorrow by Together launched, instead of using the forums, they launched the app called TXTverse. Apparently, this was the test run for what would later become Weverse, and in Weverse, fans get to get exclusive content that fans can't get anywhere else, not even on social media. Weverse has this Instagram story clone feature that is called Artist Moments, and the app is available in several languages. Weverse also allows fans to pay for premium subscriptions, and the price of an annual subscription is around $30 per year and it gives fans access to exclusive content and merchandise. Like, they have this 6 episode mini documentary series that you can only purchase and watch on the Weverse app. Plus, they get access to pre-sale tickets for tours. Weverse also has an accompanying e-commerce app called Weverse Shop, which is formerly known as Weplay. And the Weverse and Weverse Shop combo is kinda like a mix of Instagram and Shopify, but I don't know, it's really more than that. 
because the focus is really on building features that these K-pop groups need to nurture their fan base. Personally, when I saw the app, and if you're a super fan, you're gonna love it because everything you need to know about your favorite artists, they're all there, and it will definitely fuel your fandom. This platform has gained a lot of users because of the popularity of BTS, as well as other groups under Big Hit Entertainment. But Big Hit is trying to grow this platform into something that can stand on its own. I'm not quite sure yet if they're planning to allow other competing K-pop groups to use these platforms as well, but that is possible. The company has said that while initially you might think that the Weavers is helping the popularity of BTS, they see it as BTS as the one helping Weavers. Think of it as an influencer in a brand relationship, where BTS is the influencer promoting the Weavers platform. All of this is part of Big Hit's plan on creating something that goes beyond BTS, and that's why they're building all this technology. In fact, Big Hit has an app development subsidiary called BNX. Their focus is on building these services that maximizes the online and offline experiences for fans around the world. In 2019, Big Hit's first quarter financials show that Weavers accounted for 38% of its total revenue in the first quarter, which is actually quite significant. Aside from this, another thing Big Hit is developing that's quite impressive is their focus on what they call as indirect artist involvement. So since BTS really is their main cash cow as of the moment, all you can do really is to maximize their schedule, right? Like the limits of what the group can do, the number of shows, concerts, events, sponsorships, all of this is only limited to the hours in their day. So what Big Hit did was to find other ways to make use of and earn from BTS popularity without the need of their direct involvement and without adding any more hours into their workday. Their first project based on this strategy is BT21. BT21 are a bunch of these really cute animated characters and each character represents a member of BTS. When the project was started, each member of the group was asked to draw a cartoon character. And so what's amazing about this move is that fans who support whichever member of the band, well, their support extends to these cute characters as well. With this move, they've basically sort of duplicated BTS impact. This move is unique since normally, the common practice is to go all in on the group's brand itself. Creating parallel brands like BT21 are discouraged since it may dilute the efforts of the company. But Big Hit went for it and are reaping the rewards. One of the benefits of this is that it removes exclusivity. I mean, as you may expect, each member of the group or the group itself have signed brand partnerships that have clauses of exclusivity. The BT21 brand gives Big Hit more flexibility because now, despite those exclusive agreements, they can use BT21 on other mediums unrestricted by those contractual agreements, while at the same time enjoy the impact of BTS through BT21 characters. Another benefit is that it allows Big Hit to enter into brand partnerships that BTS members may not particularly want to be associated with. So, for example, if a member of the group doesn't want to partner up with, let's say, Gatorade, since he likes Pokari Sweat more, then Big Hit can use BT21 instead. Plus, the potential for merch collaborations using these characters are just huge. In fact, BT21 has already collaborated with Uniqlo, Puma, Converse, Antisocial Social Club, and Hot Topic. Big Hit has realized how good of a move this is, and they've since added another one to the list when in 2019, they launched Tiny Tan. Tiny Tan are another set of animated characters, but they're now the animated versions of each BTS member, whereas BT21 ones were like random cute characters. Just think of the Toy Story type of animation versions of these BTS members. Tiny Tan is another fantastic project since the animated characters can express an imaginative vibe that the real BTS can't, adding an extra layer of creativity to their songs. Big Hit has shared that they'll be creating storylines, perhaps a series in the future, and of course, all this creates so many collabs and licensing opportunities for global brands. Big Hit's Intellectual Property Division, or Big Hit IP, took the artist's music, photo, music videos, and other source IPs to expand to secondary IPs such as characters, universes, and music-based IPs and built business models on this foundation. Big Hit's development of BT21 and Tiny Tan signal the company's move to monetize their IP. Just imagine how Disney cashes in on their characters' unlicensing deals and collabs. 
Not only that, both BD21 and Tiny Tan amplified the popularity of BTS without affecting their schedules. And perhaps the biggest impact of these projects is that it allows the group to live healthier lives and focus on what they do best, which is to create great music. The group can take breaks, explore other projects, yet BT21 and Tiny Tan can continue nurturing its wild fanbase. There are other projects Big Hit is working on that allows it to profit without the band's direct involvement. One of their products which was actually pretty impressive was their Learn Korean with BTS product. So they have a video series about this where members of BTS are teaching you Korean. But of course, people don't really watch it to learn Korean. They, they usually just watch it so that they can go crazy about BTS. And trust me, I've seen the videos. But what's impressive is the physical version of this, learn Korean with BTS. So once you order the product, they give you this very thick instructional book. And it comes with this pen which has a speaker. And when you point that pen on a specific part of the book, it starts giving you instructions, so that one was pretty cool. Aside from this, unsurprisingly, Big Hit has a couple of mobile games for BTS. They partnered up with Netmarble, a game development company, for the development of games that involve BTS, such as BTS World, BTS Universe Story, Puzzle Star BT21, among several others. But Big Hit realized that they can go further. So in 2019, they acquired Superb, a game development company. Superb is now under Big Hit IP, and it will focus on not only creating games, but games that specifically involve the music industry. So their goal here is to combine music and games in order to further support and nurture fans, as well as a secondary revenue stream for these artists. What's great about this is that Although they may be doing all these to capitalize on BTS success, these new projects have the potential to be able to stand on their own since they can become something that other future K-pop groups or artists around the world can use as well. Fast forward to today, so even though Big Hit has been developing these platforms and building its IP, all these are still currently, in a way, untested. Whether they would be as big as they are today if BTS is no longer around. Big Hit's future actually looks promising compared to the other big entertainment companies because at least Big Hit has built platforms such as Weavers and Weaver Shop, which are platforms that can become a post-BTS revenue source. Whatever happens, there's no doubt that Bang Si Hyuk has created something incredible here. Whether they remain as big as they are if and when BTS is no longer in the picture, we're gonna have to wait and see. And so that's it. Now you know what the brand origin story of Big Hit Entertainment. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We have more episodes on our podcast. Just look for Brand Origins on any podcast app. This episode is made possible by Ask Zeus. For $99, they'll give you honest and actionable feedback for your brand. The links are in the description. Until the next one, this is Chris Garin.